Hey guys, this is Cal Jordi, founder of Fearless Transformation. Today I'm talking to you about a model that I was able to uh, build on from different other models that use specifically uh, disk profile. And um, I was able to um, use it in a different ways and bring in different distinctions into it. And I'm going to present to you the model that it really made a lot of difference to me and uh, I hope that it will make a lot of difference to you and it's been making a lot of difference with people that have been doing seminars to all over the country um, doing uh, seminars around business uh, communication uh, leadership uh, is and personal development so the model is called SCAR S-C-A-R SCAR and uh, <laughs> that's one way that I could remember it because now it made a scar in my brain that I can never forget that model and so what is the purpose of this model? This model is to help you be able to do a few things. Build rapport with people, uh, be able to persuade and influence, and motivate people. Okay, So those are the three things I'm able to deliver to you. <clears throat> and uh, so you can use it with uh, people that you just barely met, uh, prospects that you want, that you want to... Uh, and get them involved in your product or service or uh, maybe a person that's standing in a uh, in a coffee shop uh, and wanted to ask him out on a date or it could be uh, your children to have them to uh, do their chores or it could be a spouse or uh, could be uh, a co-worker or even a boss okay so persuasion is the uh, number one <coughs> tool that you could use as a leader leaders are persuaders so if you're a business owner if you are a manager if you are a parent we are leaders whether we like it or not we are being the change that we want to see in the world as Mahatma Gandhi said and we're leading by example so in order for us to be able to help people to become the person or the leader that they want to be it's important for us to be able to have the skill of persuasion so I know people who are who have the skills who have the knowledge and who have a lot of value to offer other people however they don't have the skills to persuade people and as a result they fall behind and other people do not listen to them as mentors coaches or motivators on the other hand I know some people who they may not know everything about anything in that specific department and uh, they don't need to because they have the skills to build rapport and persuade people to take action and find information for them to grow and develop so persuasion is very very important it's a key in helping others to um, to, to motivate others all right so what is that model <clears throat> that model is um, consisted of First, you want to ask yourself four questions. Okay, when you meet when you meet people, when you interact with people. So, what are the four questions? The questions are: Is that person direct in their communication, or is that person indirect in their communication? Okay. So, do they tell you how it is, or they go a bit around the bush? Do they have no problem just being out, outgoing, um, extroverted, uh, maybe uh, loud? Or they're more like introverted, shy, and uh, more like on the passive, uh, polite side. Okay. The second question you want to ask yourself is that person you're talking to, or you're meeting, or you want to get involved in your product and service, for example, are they task oriented, or are they people oriented? Okay. So. How would you know that is um, if somebody is task oriented it's all about getting things done getting things done getting things done getting things done okay whereas people person they want to have this little chit chat with you hi how are you how's it going okay that having that build the people relationship that's that's gonna be listened to in the language okay so those are the two questions you want to ask uh, are they direct or indirect or they are task oriented or people oriented those are the two frameworks that you want to ask yourself and then based on that you'll be able to tell if are they a C are they a, are they S are they a C are they an A or are they an R 
So let's go and talk about each one of them and what does that mean to you. Yeah. So first question you ask yourself, are they direct in their communication? If the answer is yes, they're direct, they're straightforward, they have no problem telling me how it is, great. So you know that they belong on this side of the chart. Okay? And the second question you want to ask you, yourself is, are they people, people or are they more getting things done people? Okay. So if the answer is people, people, then you know that now they are an S. So what does S stands for? S stands for a socializer. Okay. So that person is a socializer. So who are the socializers? Socializers are the innovators. Um, so if you are working at a company, for example, these are the people who come up with new ideas. Um, for your children, for example, they come up with ideas that outside the box. Okay, um, person that you know and you met that you come up with uh, something that uh, innovative. It's all about innovation. They strive off challenge. They like to be challenged. They don't like to be uh, confirming. They don't like to confirm to the norms, to the rules, to the regulations because that kills their spirit. They want to think outside the box. They're visionaries, and um, they um, they can be a little bit scattered because one idea come in, one idea coming out. So as a result, as a downfall of that, that they may they may tend to not follow through. So they come up with brilliant ideas and they tend to not follow through. Who would be an example of that? Maybe entrepreneurs, some type of entrepreneurs. They you know they go into maybe. Uh, uh, the MLM or uh, network marketing and then they go and meet people, they're great, they're charismatic, they're, they're great salespeople and yet when it comes to follow through they may have a problem following through if they're not conscious about it. Okay, So uh, socializers are charismatic, uh, they're great, make, uh, great salespeople, they're great influencers, they make great project managers if you're working at a company, they can get people to get together and um, they would be able to connect with each type of person, no problem, okay? Those are the socializers, and uh, they have a good, good, really good tendency to figure out what's missing as far as um, uh, people who are being isolated, he, they know how to get up all together and be on the same page, okay? Those are the socializers. Uh, what is their biggest fear? The socializers' biggest fears are to uh, be ignored. Okay, socializers love to be under the spotlight. They love to be recognized. They like to take credit for it as well. Okay, so one of their biggest fears is um, social rejection. The biggest fear is social rejection and doing the wrong thing for other people because their reputation, their credibility counts a lot for them because they're people people, they're outgoing, so they want to make sure that they can preserve that at all times. So as a result, they are, uh, their biggest fear is social rejection and um, as a result, if they get rejected socially, then they tend to have a couple of different personalities. One of them would be a grenade, meaning they could just like explode their emotions. They have no control on their emotions. They'll be all over the place. They'll be upset. They'll be talking and they'll be yelling and screaming. They will have lose control on their emotions. Okay? So one thing you can do when this happens, if this happens, is save them face. Tell them, look, you know, it looks like, you know, I like your idea. I like your idea. I'm not, you know, negating this idea because socializers, um, they, you know, when someone brings their idea down or they ignore their idea or they tell them, no, that doesn't work or things like that, they do not like negative people. They expect you to smile back when you, when they smile. They expect you to talk back when they talk. Okay, so when you don't do that, this, they, they, they take it sometimes personal. So when this happens, let's say if you're sharing with them an idea, and you're sharing with you an idea, and you tell them, you know, that's just, this, you know, there's some concerns around it, and that person just like goes into a grenade mode. You can tell them, you know, I like your idea. Let's just see how can we make it work, or let's discuss about the details. Okay, and if their emotions are still outbursts, you know, you want to calm them down because you want to save them face, and they will thank you for it. Okay. Another mode that they can fall to when they're under pressure would be a mode of uh, snipers. They can become snipers. Well, how would the sniper do? They, they will shoot you from far in distance. They will make comments so they can put you down on your knees, okay? And they'll be laughing about it. They may, they're very witty, so you don't want to fight, fight their battle. And it's important to point it out right away. So if you are presenting in front of a group or I mean a social setting um, and you're having you know people around you, you're out at dinner or you are just having a drink with few people and there's a sniper right there because you've been ignoring all night, they're gonna just make comments 
And when they had come, it's like, huh, you know, what is that all about? You know, is, is anything that we need to clean up? Uh, are you okay? Is everything okay? Just, you know, bring it up. Because if you don't bring it up, now they will take it as a sign of weakness and they will keep sniping you over and over. Okay? So those are the socializers. Um, the second one we're going to talk about would be the C. Who are the C's? C's are the commanders. They're the commanders in chief. That's right. Their motto is, you know, just get down to business. Get down to business. I got no time to, uh, you know, ask you about your weekend. Don't ask me about my weekend. I could care less. Okay, let's get things done. The bottom line, that's it for them. It's just bottom line. They like to communicate through bullet points. When they call you, they just get down to business. They don't even say hi and hello. All right? So don't take it personal. Their type of the C, their commanders, it happens that my sister tend to be his commander. So I used to take it personal in the beginning, but now I got this model. I was like, okay. So she sent me an email just right away asking, you know, asking for something. And I was like, you know, what happened to the hi, hello, right? So, you know, so I, I don't take it personal anymore. Uh, the commanders, they get things done. It's all about the bottom line. They're very task oriented. They are goal oriented. It's all about getting things done. They, they juggle projects left and right as long as you don't waste their time. Okay, so this is very important for them. Don't waste their time. Get in, get out, get, the, get, get down to business. Um, they are very decisive. They're risk takers and they're very decisive. They can make a decision. You know, someone has to make a decision and you can always count on the C's to make a decision. It may not be the right decision, but somebody has to make a decision and the commander for sure can make a decision. Okay, um, what could be a downfall of the commander? They're very structured and all that, but what could be a downfall would be something like um, they could work on some of their communication skills. They can come across as harsh, they can come across as abrupt and uh, impatient, impatient. So that would turn some people off, and guess who would turn that off? That would turn the people, people right here, the S and the R, which I'm going to be talking about the, the R in a little bit. So it will turn them off. So C's can work on some of their listening skills, some of the patient and listening skills, maybe repeating back what the other person has said so they can now build that rapport versus having, okay, I need this project done by this time and now I'll see you later. You know, you need to build that relationship, the communication skills for the C it will take them very, very, very far, all right? Under stress, or what's the biggest fears? Under the biggest fears for the C would be uh, losing control. Losing control and not being in charge. Losing control, not being in charge. So for them, they, they want to be in control. It's very important to be in control. They're very dominating. And if they lose control or be, they feel a threat that's, that they are about to lose control, their behavior, their negative behavior that will show up, would we will call them, would be a, uh, a bully. They become like a bully. They start you know, yelling at you. They tell you, get out of here. I'll do it my way. I don't care. They become a bully. They start bullying you. Or they become a tank. A tank, they will just ignore you and just go straight to the target and they will run over anybody that comes their way. Okay? So those are the C's. Um, under stress, we talked about uh, how, how, how would they become under stress? When they lose control. Okay? And when they lose control, they become either bullies or become tanks. Moving on. A stands for the analyzers analyzers so who are the analyzers so the question is, so they're task oriented and they're indirect in, the, in their um in their uh, communication so this is our this is the most introverted out of all of these four personality types and who are the inter uh, the analyzers the analyzers are um analyzers it's all about the numbers it's all about the statistics okay i could care less how you feel about it and um, I don't care about how excited you are about this thing that you're talking about. Facts, talk, numbers, statistics, that's all what I care about. They tend to be very monotone and they will see like they're like an iceberg that nothing shakes them, nothing moves them. They make great um, problem solvers. They nitpick the problem all the way to the bottom and for them it's never enough research it's never enough numbers as a result as a downfall of that they could have hard time to make a decision they can tend to be a little bit indecisive because of that uh, so another thing about the a's would be that uh, their biggest fears is to be wrong to be wrong you can always take the a's and you can uh, take what they say and run away with it because they they do a lot of research on when they talk and they want to be very thorough 
is very thorough in everything that they talk about. So with the A, you need to make sure that if you are motivating, you are influencing an A, that you need to have your facts straight when you talk to an A. Estimation doesn't work with an A. Oh, it's around 80%. No, it's 82.5%. That's what they would correct you and say, okay? Um, they will test you if you are trying to um, persuade them to get involved in your product or service. They will test you. They will ask you questions. They, they may know the answer of, they just want to see um, what do you know, okay? What do you know? So make sure that you have your, your facts together and make sure that you have it now. Like having that, having that, oh, I'll get back to you, it doesn't work so much with them. They, they're the most difficult out of the four personality type to uh, persuade uh, to get involved in your product or your service if you're selling something. Um, however, the great, great, great project, ma uh, pr the problem solvers, great problem solvers. As a result, remember, they have hard time to make a decision because it's never enough research. So you want to help them make a decision. You want to give them options. Tell them, look, you know, um, give me a few options, whatever you think, and I'll pick something from them. Okay? So give me two or three possible solutions. I'll pick one of them. If you are a manager uh, or a supervisor or even if you're a parent, you know, you, what do you think I should do? Well, tell me what do you think I should do? And let them come up with just ideas and help them make a decision that way. That would work best with the uh, analyzer. Um, what would stress them? What, uh, what stress them, the biggest fear of being wrong? So um, you, what you wanna do is you wanna save them face, okay? You wanna save them face. If they make a mistake, save them face. Don't point it out that, oh, that is wrong. Just, you know, in, in a finesse, an indirect way, try you know, you know, help them to come up with a right, right answer. Send them maybe an article. You know, take them out to lunch or entertain them. Doesn't work so much with the A's. Uh, what works best with the A's is maybe provide them with an interesting fact or an interesting, um, um, interesting idea. Okay, that would build rapport with the A. Okay, uh, socializing, telling them a joke doesn't work so much as much as it would work with the S. See, the S and the A are the completely opposite personality. They're the opposite on that grid. With the S, you can make jokes, and it's important to build that rapport in the beginning. With the A's, it doesn't work that way. You want to you you share more like facts and statistics and all that. All right? <clears throat> so let's, uh, uh, let's move on. Uh, oh, when under stress, the, the, the negative behavior, when they're under stress, they will become more like negative people. So they will be more like the naysayers, we call them. No, that doesn't work. And now we tried that, oh, what's the point? Things like that, okay? So um, when they go into that mode, it's important for you that uh, you help them come up with their own solutions. Don't offer them solutions because when they offer them solutions, they will for sure, you know, um, uh, tell you that doesn't work or we tried that before. So, you know, don't offer them solution and don't acknowledge that they're right. So when they go into the negative mode, don't say, yeah, you're right, uh, you know, you got a point there. Because when you say you're right, automatically now it's your problem. It's not their problem anymore. So acknowledge what they said, repeat back what they said, and offer them to, a way for them to come up with their own solutions. It's very important for them to come up with their own solutions if you want to help them um, to, uh, if you're going to get things done. All right? If you want to persuade them and get things done. <clears throat> Moving on to the R's. Okay, the R's. R stands for relators. So who are the relators? Relators are the personality type that uh, is all about the team. It's not about you, it's not about me, it's about we. Okay, those are the relators. There is are the loyal, the very loyal to their friends, their family, the, 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 the company they work for, the very loyal. And the R's also, they ooze empathy, they, the people love talk to the relators. The relators are, uh, they may have few friends, but they're very, very close friends because they are people, people. They're indirect in their communication, which means that you know they say yes when they really mean to say no, and because they're very polite, for them it's they want to seek people's approval. It's important to have people's approval. It's important for them to be part of a team. So they're the cheerleaders, if you may say. Okay, why don't we all of us you know get along? That's the, that that's important for them. Why don't we all get, get along? Um, and they're very reliable people as well. Very reliable. They're there for you when you need them. And it's important to build that rapport and ask them how you're doing and how you're feeling. And just have this little chit chat with them and build that relationship. That's why they're called related because the relationship is very important for them. Okay. Um, as a, as a limitation, um, it could be for the relator that because they, they can take things personal. 
Okay? So um, they, they're very sensitive, take things personal, and as a result, uh, they become unproductive or you have to you know, watch out for their feelings. Okay? But overall, they're, they're, they're the most, um, you know, people love the relators are the most because they're so much easier to uh, get along with for the long term. Okay? Um, as far as under, what, what would stress them is um, conflict and um, you know when they are when they are being uh, uh, pushed when being pushed around that's th that's one of their biggest pet peeves so when they go if they go into that mode they can be they can just shut down just shut down they'll give you the silent treatment they will give you a one word answer um, you know you do them wrong the first time great first time okay third time they won't talk to you anymore it's done okay so with the writers you know just it's important for them the relationship respect and appreciation appreciation is huge for them you want to appreciate them when you're communicating with the writers you want to get them involved in your product or service you want to ask them out uh, for a date you want to have them to do your chores it's important to appreciate them first versus having to tell them what to do and get straight to the point all right so um, those are the four personality types uh, um, remember you know this is you know this is being built on the disk profile and uh, it's been modified from many different uh, you know avenues and I hope it serves you and remember you know the point of this is you know help people by uh, treating them how they like to be treated not how you like to be treated so that's the whole point of it treat people how they like to be treated, not how you like to be treated. I hope that brings value to you. And uh, this is Cal Dirty with Fearless Transformation, and I'll see you in the next module. Cheers.